You're just in time for another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm John Zadar, and this is September 20th. It is Wednesday. Tomorrow, Thursday, I've got my live streaming event. I do this every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host, Taylor, we're there for an hour. We're there to talk to investors about stocks they're interested in. We share stocks with you all week. This gives you a chance to share some hot stocks with us. So bring in your tickers, drop them in the comments. I'll go over the information. Taylor will go over the charts and we'll give you our opinion on it. Now, most of the time we get to all the tickers, but sometimes we don't. So if you want to guarantee that your ticker gets looked at, drop it in early. I put up a placeholder for the video around 2, 2.30, sometimes even earlier. You can drop your ticker in then. That'll give me a chance to actually do the due diligence for it before the show even starts. So that's four o'clock every Thursday, Eastern Standard Time. So what I like to do on this show is share stocks with you. I'm looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that have potential to make us money. And I'm doing my research by looking at the charts. I am looking for charts with heat. When I find a chart that looks like it's ready to break out or has a strong amount of volume coming in, then I'll go rummaging around through the press releases and the filings looking for a catalyst. When I find one, I've got myself a hot penny stock. And I got a few of those to share with you right now. First ticker up for your consideration is IMHC, Imperialist Holdings Corporation, soon to have her name changed to Turn On Green. Now this chart, it's not the kind of chart we normally look at. We're normally looking at breakout charts. This is more of a recovery chart. She had a big drop. She was at 20 cents and fell all the way down to a penny. And her first strong resistance is up at 5 cents. This thing starts to move. It looks like it won't slow down until it hits 5 cents. Once it hits that and gets over it, she's back in the channel that she was in for a long time. A channel from 5 cents to 15 cents. That's another 10 cents that she could take. So we've got a lot of potential on the chart if she starts to move, and she is just now starting to move. And she's had a lot of hot news come out here recently. So there's a lot of good reasons to be looking at this company right now. IMHC finished the day at one cent with about five and a half percent drop today. She is on the pink tier. She's current, and she's got those two green ticks we're always talking about. Verified profile and a transfer agent verified. This is validated information, which is most important on the OTC, but it is critical for a pink. You don't get any validated information with pinks, folks. All the information you get, you're taking the word from the management about it. Even with the financials, those are called disclosures because you don't even have a CPA look at them. So whenever you can get these two green ticks over here underneath a pink, you know you've got validated information. So you're ahead of the game there. So what is Turn On Green all about? Power, electric power. They've got two subsidiaries now. One works with commercial enterprises supplying them energy and the other one supplies electricity for electric vehicles. They're putting out charging units. Turn On Green designs and manufactures innovative, feature-rich and top quality power products for mission critical applications. Life-saving and sustaining applications spanning multiple sectors in the harshest environments. The diverse markets we serve include defense and aerospace, medical and healthcare, industrial, telecommunications, and e-mobility. The company is committed to building a public and private electric vehicle charging infrastructure throughout the United States, Canada, and abroad. And they seem to be putting a lot of attention into these charging units. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ah, like it's been for the last 30 days. She's been doing roughly three quarter million shares a day for the last 30 days. Today she did about three quarter million shares. Share structure for Imperialists, that is Turn On Green. Turn On Green has 183 million in the outstanding share count. They don't give us the float here, but they do. We get a float down here. I just normally don't pay any mind to it because the date is normally just way out there. But this is pretty current. This is July of this year, and they say the float at that time was 82 million. It's possible it could still be 82 million, but we do know for sure it won't be anything higher than 183 million. Financials for the company. 
Well, the last two years, they've been making revenues pretty steady, about five and a half million each year. And the profits are growing year after year. Looking at the quarterly, oh boy, she's taken a drop since last year. They were over a million. Now they're under a million, down to 724,000. And look, the profits have gone away and they're now losing money. We're not liking that. Disclosures for the company. Well, we've got a few 8Ks here. One is for bylaws, one's changing management. Nothing we really need to be concerned about for the stock. Taking a look at the company's news. First piece of news I want to show you is rather old. This comes out March of last year. But this shows you how they became turn on green. They tell us here that Bit Niles Holdings announced today that their subsidiary, Turn On Green, which is an electric vehicle charging power company, has entered into a purchase agreement with Imprellis Holdings, another subsidiary of Bit Nile. This one, though, is publicly traded. It's on the open market. After this is done, Turn On Green will be a subsidiary of Imperialis. Upon the completion of the acquisition, Imperialis will change its name to Turn On Green. They will have two operating subsidiaries, Turn On Green Technologies and Digital Power Corporation. BitNile will assist Turn On Green in pursuing an uplisting to the NASDAQ capital market. That's what they do. They're a holdings company. They build up companies while they're in their care, and then they spin them off into the market. The company anticipates that stockholders of BitNile will, in due course, receive a dividend of securities for Turn On Green. Now, this is a bit unique. I've never seen this before. We have three pieces. One right here, the initial distribution of those dividends. That was at the beginning of July then a partial distribution of the securities about a week later, and then the second partial distribution. So they're getting their shares in bits and pieces. I don't know why, but they are getting them. Now, they've got a lot of news here about business that they're doing. Looking back here in June, the company was awarded a $1 million purchase order. The company was also awarded defense contract to design and develop custom power supply for tactical communications network. Turn On Green expands electric vehicle charging infrastructure in California and Pennsylvania. The company teams up with nationwide automotive fleet management firm. Turn On Green expands electric vehicle charging infrastructure to three Best Western affiliated properties in Eastern Canada. And then the most recent one here, uh, yesterday, Turn On Green subsidiary Digital Power Corporation awarded initial contract to manufacture enhanced power distribution systems for missile defense systems. And that's what it is. This is a part that they need so that they can shoot the missiles. And the contract is for initially $350,000. It can grow from there. But you can see they've got a lot going on here. They've already had one spin out. They want to spin this out at some point in time. We don't know when that's going to be. But I like what I see here. And as I said, the chart is set up for once she starts growing, chances are she's going to go from one cent to five cent. And that is going to be a huge gain. Even if it only went to three cents, that would be 300% gain on your investment if you got in now at a penny. Let's go take a look at that chart. I get to do some charting. I get to do some charting. God, I love charting. I really do. So we're looking at Turn On Green, ticker IMHC, and we're going to be doing all of our charting on Thinkorswim. This is my free trading platform. I got it when I signed up with TD Ameritrade, and that didn't cost me anything either. So we are looking at a one-day, one-year chart. Our 52-week high hit in November, 35 cents, and our 52-week low hit in July of 0013. Now, let's jump on down to that six-month, four-hour view. Five months ago, our high was 20 cents. Our low hasn't changed. And as you can see, she's been going sideways for a very long time. And the 50 has been close, but obviously not close enough. Now, let me see if I can zoom in here for you. This gets a bit tricky with TOS, but we're going to come in on here and see if we can do this one more time there. And then we'll back this out for us. 
All right. Now, as you can see, let me get a little bit closer there. All right, there you go. Look at those wicks, folks. Look at these astronomically long wicks we've got. We have them on both sides. That is travel time. The price is actually hitting all of these points during this four hour period because each bar represents four hours. This one bar right here, she started down here at uh, 0015 and went up to 1.4 cents. That is like 950% gains in one day, in one four hour period. So we've got lots of wicks here and this shows a tendency of what direction she wants to go. And you can see she had a lot of down pressure here. We had small green wicks, but big, tall red wicks. Well, now we start seeing the green wicks are coming into the picture after the red wicks have disappeared and we are breaking through our 50 day SMA. And you can't get to the 200 until you break through the 50. And that support line is right there, folks. There it is at a nickel. So if she can turn up and start to break, there's really nothing to slow her down. She should be able to push up to that point easily. Now looking at our oscillators, looks like I got to zoom in on everything here. We got a recovery going right there. You can see she's just crossing right now our PPO, percentage price oscillator. Looking at our MACD, it's as flat as can be too. Let me get one more zoom in there. What do we got? A recovery, she's just crossed and she's going over a signal line right now and our RSI has fallen. She's gone from 62 down to a very chilly 49. Coming down to our one hour, 20 day view. So she's been going sideways, but notice the wicks are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. She's getting tighter and tighter, right? Until she's virtually one line here. Then she opened back up and now she's opening to run. She's expanding her wings to take flight. She got a nice bounce here. She came in at a penny, went to one and a half. That's 50% gains right there. Came back down. You can't expect it to run the very first time it gets through. It's got to test the surface. It's got to come back down, make sure everything's strong. And it's come right back down to the 50 and it looks like it should bounce from here. Our oscillators, everything looks like it is just at that point of making a decision. Am I going to bounce or not? Our RSI has just started to turn up. Our five day, five minute. So we got a low back here of 0065 underneath the 200, pushed all the way up to a penny. Wow, that's like 80% gains right there. And then she just stuck right through this area for about four days. And here in the last day and a half, she's starting to work it. She's starting to get some activity going here. Now she has come right back, but we got a green bar showing that she's not done. I'm thinking stuff is just starting up here, folks. And if you can get into this at the penny point, now you don't have to buy everything right now, but you could get a nice position. And when she starts to grow, I think she is going to float. Let's take a look at that four hour chart. So right there, here is our break point. Now this goes way up here, but this is the very highest point she had right there. And this is about where she was sitting the entire time. There was nothing else really here. She might get up to this point right there. That would be 2.8 cents. That would be 280% gains just getting to that. So if that's all you're interested in, that would be a good spot. IMHC, she could bring you some good gains. It looks like a recovery play to me. Our next hot penny stock comes from the major exchange. This is a biotech, a biopharmaceutical company. This is Kanita Inc. Ticker K A. And she's got everything going on right now. She has a hot atypical breakout chart that looks perfect. Dick. <laughs> she's got news that just came out. Dick. And she has had inside buys. Tick, 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 tick. Everything looks great. I can't see any reason why we shouldn't be looking at KA. KA finished the day at $2.21, though she did drop just a little over 7% today. She is on the major exchange, the NASDAQ. That means there's no transaction fees. You can trade this for free and you can trade her pre-market, after-market. You can't do that with OTC stocks. Now, I've told you that she is a biotech, but let's get a little more information. Not much. I don't want to get technical. It's tough to read and I hate getting tongue-tied. <laughs> 
So they are working with drugs that help with cancer. They are working with drugs that fight tumors. They are even working with drugs to build up an immunity to cancer, if you can believe that. Now, this is a preclinical early stage company. They're working like with phase one, phase two, even before the phase trials. And they've got a few different drugs that they list up here. Now, their current catalysts are the results from their phase one and phase two. They call it clinical safety and clinical efficacy data. Well, phase one is the safety test. Is your drug safe? Can people take it without dying, without puking their brains out? Phase two is how well does your drug work? Does it work for what you say it does? And phase three is comparison. They're going to compare your drug to every drug that's out there working on the same condition. And we'll see if yours is better or not. And if there's no competition, if you've got the only drug, phase three can be quick. Otherwise, it can take three to five years to get through phase three. If there's no competition and you get orphan designation, fast track, because they want to get the drug out there since they have none, you could be out in less than a year. So they're waiting for clinical data to come out on their phase one and phase two trials, which they expect should be good and should give the stock a bounce. Not that we're here for that. Cash runaway in the early 2025. Now, I don't know if you can read this down here, but I'll read it for you. They got lots of money from lots of places. 7.8 million cash in the bank as of their second quarter of this year. $6 million they got from a registered offering. $5 million they got this from Merrick as a milestone payment that they received. And $22.5 million in pipe financing expected to close October of 2023. Pipe financing is financing that comes later on after you've gotten to a certain point. So they've got lots of money coming from lots of places, which is great because they're doing a lot of research and development, and that takes a lot of money. They tell us they have a very small float. Well, they don't actually tell us they have a small float. They tell us they have a small outstanding share count, only 9.7 million. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Nice jump. No, they're not big numbers, but she jumped from 17,000 up to 109,000 today. That's a huge jump. That's about a 500, 600% increase. Share structure for the company. Well, they just told us there was 9.7 outstanding shares. We don't know what the float is, but it's never higher than the outstanding share count and can be considerably less. So whatever it is, we've got ourselves a great float. Financials for KA. Ooh, where'd all that money go? They took a big drop from 9 million down to 1.9 million. But they're not paying anything for it, are they? I don't know if this is consultation or what, but they're not paying anything for the revenues that they make. Quarterly? <laughs> well, there's a big jump there. We went from 281,000 to 5,161,000. Now, the truth of the matter is, it's 161,000. Remember, they just got done telling us they got a $5 million payment from Merrick for getting to a certain point. So that got added in there too. But it sure looks nice there, doesn't it? Disclosures for the company. Yes, we've got insider buys here. Form 4s are filed whenever the management of the company acquires or disposes of shares of the company's stock. Now, they can do that in a variety of ways. We're primarily concerned about it when they buy them or sell them, right? Well, all of these were purchases. Let's jump into one here. Up here in the corner, it will tell you who. This is Baker Keith. They are the CFO, Chief Financial Officer, and they tell us that he just bought 5,000 shares. We got a P over here. That means he purchased. A for acquired. All these are green. That tells you it is a acquired. And he got 5,000 shares at 2.13 cents. We got another form four here. This one is a director, Raymond. Raymond has bought twice on the 15th and the 18th. He has bought 500 shares and then 2,500 shares at $2.18 and $2.08. And that last form four, this is theory. 
This is the chief scientific officer. Oh boy, he got the best price and bought the most. He got 10,000 shares at $2 each. So we have three insiders, big wigs, who have all bought shares of the company on yesterday. Now, they know more than we do. There's certain information that all of us get, and then there's certain information they can't release because of this reason and that reason, but that doesn't stop them from buying shares and investing in what they know. So sometimes riding on the shirt tails of their purchases can be a very wise move. So let's take a look at that news now for the company. So there's news back here in uh, the very end of June, the beginning of July, where they got their $5 million milestone payment from Merrick. Uh, the scientific chief officer buys 10,000 shares. We just saw that as well. And the most recent piece of news that came out two days ago, Kenita announces new research agreement to evaluate Vista biomarker expression. Now, I don't have a clue what that is because I didn't want to get tongue-tied in technical jargon, but it sounds good to me, right? So they've got news, we've got inside buys, and we've got a very hot chart. <sighs> Can't wait to share this one with you. It's a sweetheart of a chart. This is Kanita Inc., ticker KA. We are now looking at a one-day, one-year chart. A year ago, we had a high of $9.00. She got real close to that again here at $8.49, and she hit a 52-week low of $1.78 in August. Now, we don't have a 200-day SMA on this chart, but we got a 50, and you can see she is breaking out right now on the one-day, one-year chart. Looking at our six-month, four-hour chart. About five months ago, we had that $8.49, and she came down to that $1.78 in August. And from there, she was climbing ever so slowly, working her way across all the SMAs. And then about five days ago, she started to move. All these bars are real small, little tiny teeth. All of a sudden, the fangs came out, and she was biting off big bites. And she broke through the 200 today. That's the first time, and she has pulled back. Now, I will admit she's come back a little further than I am happy with. She should have stayed up here, but she is still above her 20. Volume has been growing over this last week. Oscillators have been strong the last couple of days, but this red bar right there has definitely cooled things off. And our RSI has come from the overbought all the way down to 52. <sighs> Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. That's a nice chart. Low bubble of $1.85 in this corner, high bubble of $2.68. She's slowly and steadily climbing on the 50-day SMA. Had a rubber ball drop here. She fell under the water and came right back up. When she got back up on top, she started to climb. Yeah, she had a poke here just to scare you a little bit, and she took off. She's on her nine-day SMA. She hit a high of 268, but the back half of the day, she really took a drop, going all the way down here to 217 and bouncing back up to 221. But she is up there on top of her 50 still. Oscillators were very strong until that big drop right there, and everything has cooled off a lot. Looking at that five-day, five-minute. It's not a bad chart, actually. I mean, she's been climbing the entire five days with lots of rolls. But look here. Look, she climbs in the morning and drops hard in the afternoon. Climbs in the morning, drops in the afternoon. She has this habit, not all the time, but often she did it today. Climbed and fell. So this could be a good buy point. Also, what we have here is a new SMA, the 200-day SMA. And I say this often time because I see it often time. When a new SMA comes onto the board, the price normally gravitates to it. Doesn't matter if it's above the price or below the price. The price goes to it. Now, a lot of times it'll just tag it and go right back to where it was. But in many cases, it sticks there. You never can tell. Well, this has come down to it. That doesn't surprise me. She has hit it, stopped on it. That's good to see. And she is lifting. Now, we can't see the lift here. Let's come down to the one minute. Ooh, we see some aftermarket activity there. And she has fallen. 
She has fallen down to the 221, and the technicals right now look really sad. So if you like KA, she's got a lot going for her. The insider buys is a good telltale sign, but they've had big news too. So KA, I'm liking her. Are you? This next ticker we're taking a look at, got a pretty smart technology. Most retail outlets have some sort of security device at the entrance of the store, though it really has nothing to do with you entering the store. It's more about you exiting, right? Taking something out that you didn't pay for. Well, this company's found a way to add a lot of extra features to that unit, including advertising. And right now, the chart is looking good. Now, it is an atypical breakout chart, but it's not dealing with the 200-day SMA. It's dealing with the 50 because the 200 isn't there yet. Nonetheless, it is still an atypical breakout chart. And they just had big news come out about renewing a bunch of contracts. So it's good timing. INEOF, Enio Tech Core, she finished today at five cents with just about 11.5% gains. She's on the middle tier of the OTC, the QB. We like to refer to this as the better tier. It's better than the pinks because they have to audit their financials, which they don't do on the pinks. So you're getting validated numbers here. And with the verified profile and the transfer agent verified, you're getting validated information as well. So the QB is a better tier. It's more trustworthy, more transparent. They've also got independent directors listed here. Now, the only reason I know you need to list the independent directors here is when you have plans to uplist. Now, I haven't read anything anywhere, but there's a lot of filings I haven't gone through. So chances are they do have plans to uplist. So what is Enio Tech Core all about? Well, as I said, they've got a neat device that has encapsulated a lot of different features that is going to be desired by most retail stores. Enio Tech is a digital advertising and analytics solutions company for retailers. Enio's patented technology integrates and monetizes digital screens with theft detection sensor gates at the entrances of retail stores. The company's cloud-based platform uses Internet of Things and AI technology to deliver customized digital advertising to each retail location based on the demographic mix, such as age and gender, of customer traffic at each location. The company also deploys the Enio Welcoming Network technology through a software-as-a-service-based solution to larger retail chains. So you've got a camera on this thing, and it's filming 10 seconds of you coming in, 10 seconds of you coming out. It is AI, so it is accumulating information from observation. It knows your race, it knows your age roughly, it knows what time you came in, how often you come in, what you buy when you come in. It's getting all that information, which is analytics that they want to use. Plus, there's advertising on it. And after you've been there a few times, it knows what you buy, so it advertises to you. So there's a lot of things this can do, plus protect anybody walking out with any products that they didn't pay for. So this could make a lot of money for a lot of people. When everybody's making money, and that's what advertising does, everybody wants a piece of the cake. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she was doing only 5.7 thousand shares a day for the last 30 days. Today, she about tripled that going to 18.5 thousand shares. Not big numbers, but we do have volume increase. That is the first sign of excitement. Share structure for the company. Let's see, we have 76 million shares outstanding. And since the insiders own nothing, nothing, really? We get all the shares, 76 million. Outstanding share count is the float count according to these numbers. Taking a look at those financials. Well, they've had some nice increases here. Over the last three years, they doubled going from 386,000 to 600,000, jumping another 50% to 965,000. And they're making profits. That's what we like to see. Quarterly, revenues are pretty steady, eh, near 300,000 per quarter, and they are still making profits. Things look steady as you go, and you can't complain about that. Disclosures for the company. 
eh, we got nothing over here. So let's jump on over into that news. Now the company hasn't got a whole lot of news here. This goes back all the way to February and I've got the most current news that I want to share with you. Oh, we've got a new piece of news here. I have not seen this one. The watch list by the Market Herald releases new interviews with Next Tech, 3D AI, and Enio Tech discussing their latest news. That just came out, so there's an interview. You may want to tap on into that. I've got two pieces of news I do want to share with you. One that came out in April and one that came out yesterday. The one that came out in April, Enio announces network expansion to 18 states with major retail partners. The company is pleased to announce it has successfully completed installation in over 70 retail store locations in 18 states across the United States for its major retail partners. Moreover, the company is continuing to roll out additional locations with these partners in the coming weeks and remains on track to roll out its committed locations for the remainder of 2023. Based on its current installations, Enio estimates current cumulative customer foot traffic to exceed several million shoppers per month in its installed locations with these major retail partners. And that's probably how they charge for their advertisements. We have millions of people go by this. We charge by the head. It's 0.001 cents per head, something like that. The other piece of news came out here in September. They tell us that Enio has executed updated contracts with its large national retail and regional liquor store network locations. The company announced it has entered into an updated commercial agreement with its large national retail and regional liquor store network locations. The updated contracts feature five-year and six-year contract lengths, exclusive in-store advertising rights, deployment of additional in-store media screens, and now these next couple of things included in the contract is a little bit weird. We have the right to assign the ownership of the welcoming system hardware deployed in the stores to others, to third parties. We also have the right to assign ownership of the advertising to third parties. I know they have a reason for this, more money. The updated agreements are expected to position the company for rapid growth and improved margins. We expect these contracts to accelerate our revenue growth on our in-store retail media networks and provide framework to significantly reduce our cash needs and expenditures. As a result, we expect to be able to expand the business faster while optimizing capital allocation with the ultimate goal of reaching a cash flow positive position much sooner. We expect this new contract structure to increase our flexibility in marketing distributing and expanding our Enio Media Network and ultimately driving revenues. It's a simple thing. You got to get big chain stores that have lots of stores. You don't want a lot of mom and pop businesses. That's a lot of work. So they're working with liquor stores. They're working with big retail stores. I wish they would tell us who they were. But they're just going to continue to expand because everybody wants security. Everybody needs advertisement. Everybody wants analytics so they can make more money. I think it's a hot product. Let's go take a look at that chart now. Looking at a one-year, one-day chart for Enio Tech, ticker I-N-E-O-F. Our 52-week high hit in October of last year. That was just under 17 cents. She's fallen all the way down to a low of just under 3 cents in August. Coming down to our six-month, four-hour view. We had a serious rip here when we hit her high of 15.9 cents. She jumped from 8.8 .8 to 15.9. That's about a 90% jump right there. She came back down onto this very strong support. You can see everything has been sitting on that. Fell down to another support and then lost it and has just been tumbling down until she hit that low bubble of 2.8 cents. Went sideways for a little bit and right now she is showing signs of breaking out. She's gotten up over top of that 20. You can see the size of our Bars has gotten much bigger than before. She is on top of the 20, tapping onto the 50. That's what you need for a breakout. Osculators are looking like they're ready to do it. 
Our PPO is about ready to do a crossover. Our MACD is about ready to go over to signal line. And you can see all the green bars accumulating. And our RSI has been climbing for three days from 35 up to 57. Things look like they're starting to prime. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. Not a lot to see. Volume is low on this right now. We hit a low here just under 3 cents, 2.9. And we hit a high today of 5 cents. That's about 80% run there in the last couple of days. She was growing very slowly, but look at those last two bars. They are double, triple all the size of these bars. Gains are coming quicker. She's actually broke the 50 on the one hour chart and she is holding it. She is above it right now. Osculators are looking very nice. You can see that's about ready to cross over. As soon as it does, we're going to get more strength. Our MACD is about ready to cross the signal line. This line right there, that's going to give us more strength. We've got green bar saying she is climbing right now and our RSI is pushing up and is now at 59. Checking out our five day, five minute. Not much to see there. So our low bubble is just over three cents now. And clip, 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 we just jumped up. You can see every low is higher than the one before. That's perfect. This is what I look for before I get into a stock. I want three or four lows higher than the ones before them in a row. So if she's been falling, this would be a token sign right now that she's changed her trend. So this could be the trend change right now. A little more due diligence isn't going to hurt you. I promise on all the stocks we've looked at. I bring you enough to get you interested, show you why she should run. But, you know, you may want to get into this for a long hold. Or, worst case scenario, you might get stuck in it. You want to know the company you get stuck in, right? <laughs> so look this company over, look the others over. Because as I always say, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.